This is a day I've been waiting for for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. Well, today, we are introducing three revolutionary products. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touchscreen controls. The second, a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third, a breakthrough internet communications device. So three things, a widescreen iPod with touchscreen controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communications device. These are not three separate devices, no. This is one device, and we're calling it the iPhone. Yes, I am wearing a woman's turtleneck. I only did this to channel the ghost of Steve Jobs. In this video, I will be changing the battery in one of these revolutionary devices. It has not powered on for many years. I am hoping to get it working so that my three-year-old daughter can use it as a play toy. And now, the video of this process. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can um, get this uh, original iPhone battery changed out. Um, I've never taken apart an original iPhone, so this will definitely be a new experience, but hopefully we don't break it too bad. And uh, let's get started, I guess. So I guess we'll pull out our spudger and our little prying tool. Let's see. I don't see any screws. Uh, there doesn't appear to be screws down in the hole. So I'm guessing that this plastic piece comes off first. I don't think that you can pull the screen off. We should probably take that out. I don't know if I have anything that'll fit in there. Let's see. Hmm. Will this fit? No, that's way too big. Let's see. Yeah, I wish I had a paper clip. It's just not a thing I have around usually. A little tiny nail, but I think that's going to be a little too big. Yes. Let me check if one of these will fit in it. Piece of wire. Hopefully this is strong enough to push out the uh, little SIM card holder and it is nice. Okay, so I guess we don't need that right now. Let's see if there's any kind of screws or 
Anything in there? No. Okay, I'm going to go with my gut and start taking off this plastic piece. See if I can get a prying tool underneath it. Ooh. Uh, it did go under there. Didn't sound too good, but let's uh, see what we can do. If we can get it around the whole thing. See if we can fit this in there. Okay, so it fits in there. It looks like this other side is caught, so let's see if we can get that side started. Um, don't appear to be having any luck with that. Okay, let's see if a fingernail will get into there. Fingernail reaches this, so this side must be damaged in some way. It's opening so much easier. Let's see if uh, trying that. Okay, We're making some progress. Looks like the speaker grill is a little broken on this side. I don't want to damage it any more than I have to. Let's see if we can reach this down under there and. Go in. Okay, let's see if we can see any way that it's attaching. I don't see anything. Maybe it's a kind of push in type scenario. Doesn't appear to be. Okay, let's keep working at it with the uh, little pry tool. Let's try to get it under this side. Okay, well, getting a little bit of progress on the back side. Oh, it appears to be held on with some sort of tape or something because you can hear it de sticking. So, and there we go, popped right off. Okay. So, let's see what we got here. So I've got two screws on the bottom, and three screws up here on the top. Let's, hope, let's go ahead and take the uh, three screws out of the top first. So, okay, we'll just uh, try to keep them in order. There's one. There's two. Some tweezers might come in handy actually for this. And uh, there's three. Wow, those are tiny screws. Okay. So I guess we take out these bottom ones as well. I'm not positive, but let's go ahead and do that as well. Okay. There's one. Let's get this other one out. There we go. So there's two. So let's see. I'm wondering if the back just pries off. I don't have a metal pry tool, so let's, uh, let's see if we can fit this down in there. And give it a little bit of a pry in that upward direction. Looks like it's just bending the metal. Let's see if this is smaller. So I'm not seeing how that disconnects from there. It does look like it has a little bit of a 
separation. Let's see if we can get this in there. So yeah, it has three different thicknesses around the edges. So let's see if we can get the thinnest one in there. And no. Okay. So let's see if we can maybe use a flat screwdriver, my favorite prying tool, to get under that edge and uh, start popping it off. I do need to get a little bit more space. This is a thicker bed. It's the thinnest one I've got, but it is pretty thick. Maybe a razor blade can get in there. Okay, okay. Razor blade does fit, but I don't want to pry on that because those shards are pretty scary if they fling at your eye. Let's pry just a little bit to get it open. Enough for our screwdriver. This might be a time to throw on some safety glasses. Mm, okay, so that didn't work. Let's see if it... Okay, so it does. Hmm. I am probably going to do a little damage to this, I can tell. I think I'm going to kind of have to. I can probably bend that back when I'm done. When I'm done mutilating it. Okay, so. Hmm. Let's get a little wider of a blade. Uh, for our flat screwdriver, see if that gives us a little bit of leverage that we can maybe use. Okay, yeah, so give it a little bit of a turn. Maybe pry it out a little bit more while I turn it. Doesn't seem like the right way to do it, but let's try this side again. So I'm going to be using this uh, phone for my three-year-old. Uh, hopefully I can get it to play YouTube and whatnot, and then I can have this be her little play phone. She's already been using it. That's kind of how it got in the condition it is. So I'm not too concerned about scratches and scuffs and dents and things like that but i do want to try to get it um apart you know somewhat properly maybe i don't want to pry on this top part because there's a lot of electronics right there all right let's keep uh keep at it on this side get that screwdriver blade back under there Okay, so that's not it's not right. But it's the only way I can do it. Hmm. Let me see if I can just keep shimmying it down. Maybe I can put a little pressure on this little leg right here. It is connected to, oh, well, there goes my first broken piece. Fun, okay. Well, apparently it's pretty solid without that piece, so I don't think I really care that much. Okay, well, that wasn't a good idea. Let's keep praying on the side. It seems to be sturdy enough to not get too damaged. Oh, okay. Should have just kept going with that. All right, I guess we gotta try to get the other side a little bit. See if, uh... Okay. It's 
pry tools are a little too fragile, I think. Yeah. All right, let's pull that out with this. Bend it out a little bit and then see if we can get our flat screwdriver up under there. There we go. Now we'll just do like we did on the other side and as we can, just slowly pry it and slide the screwdriver down. So. It's not faring well for that side. It looks like it's gonna probably break off. Hopefully I can bend that back into place without cracking it. Okay, there we finally fucking go. All right. I'm willing to bet there's probably some uh, cables under there attached to the back for the buttons. I can't quite see down there. All right. Oh, there we go. And yes, there is a cable. Let's use our plastic spudger to detach that. There we go. Okay, so I uh, did do quite a bit of damage um, to the edges, but I think it'll still be fine, hopefully. Um, let's see if we can bend that back a little bit. No, well, I mean, it probably would have been nicer to have like a real spudger, a real metal spudger or pry tool instead of trying to use the uh, flat screwdriver because it's a little too fat so I kind of had to work it a little harder than expected but okay let's see what we got in here now so there's the battery and there's the connectors one problem I am seeing right now is this battery has a yellow red and black this one has red, black, and white. So hopefully white is comparable to yellow, otherwise I am going to fry the shit out of this thing. So, all right, let's uh, see if we can get this out without popping that open. That would be very bad. Lithium ion batteries aren't uh, very good with getting punctured. So let's uh, try some uh, plastic tools. If we can get up under there. Looks like it is uh, loose in there. It doesn't seem to be glued down or anything. Okay, yeah, there we go. I am under there. Let's put this under there to keep that side up. Oh, that's not working. Let's. See if we can loosen this side too. Maybe from right there. Okay. Do not want to puncture this with my eyes this close to it. No more video games for me if I can't see. It is taped down, it seems. So let's keep working at it. Okay. I definitely don't want to stick any metal tools down in there because that's uh, prone to not go well. Let's uh, pry again from this side and see if we... Can unstick. 
like that glue. Okay, We're pretty deep under there. I don't see any wires connected to the bottom, so I think that top bit is the only... Okay, I can see the glue now. Let's see if you can see it under there. It's there, believe me. You can obviously hear it. Okay, so I definitely did more damage than I wanted to to that battery pack. It's not safe, but... Okay, well, battery is loose. Let's uh, go ahead and desolder that. Get this crap out of the way. Get our workspace space cleaned up. Uh, we got one extra screw now that we broke that piece off, but it is what it is. All right. Okay. Need to get that out of the way. Okay. So let's, uh, let me get a different tip on this thing real quick. Hold on one second. Okay, so I think I'm ready to go. I got my uh, solder braid. I got some electrical tape so I can isolate the uh, individual wires as I pull them off. Um, some tweezers, because I think these will be a little bit overkill. May damage the wires. We don't want that. And then I got a little bit of a smaller tip on the uh, soldering iron. So a little wedge tip. So let's go ahead and try to get each of these off one at a time. I'm going to start with the black one, so I'm going to grab a hold of it with my tweezers. And then I'm just going to touch that little solder joint. Come on now. It appears to have some sort of glue or epoxy over the solder, so that may be what's causing me the issue here. Let me take a look at it. Yeah, it does have something on it. So we can scrape it off a little. I don't want to short these wires, but I'm going to get this goobery shit off. Let's use a plastic tool so we don't bridge these battery wires. Jeez. Not sure what this is, but it's pretty boogery shit. So we can pull it off. Okay, well, I can see the bare solder now, so let's go ahead and try to pull it out this time, see if we can get enough heat on it to disconnect it. Okay, so let's get some heat on that again. Oh, come on now. Oh, there we go. There's one. Let's go ahead and isolate that one so it doesn't touch anything else. Come on, electrical tape. Get a nice uh, clean tear on there. All right, so. Okay, so black wire is now taped and out of the way. Let's do the white one next. Get that one tight and see if we can get that one. Not 
I didn't get as much of the glue off of this one, so we may have to scrape at this one again too. Come on now. There we go. It's pretty close to the red wire. Let's go ahead and get that one isolated. All right. Time for the red wire. All right. This one I can see quite a bit of the bare solder, so hopefully it's not as big of an issue. Come on. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to clean up the site before we even attempt to solder to these pads. Come on. I can feel the heat coming down the wire, so that's not a good sign. We don't want to heat up this lithium ion battery much. Okay. Come on. Okay, we're going to just have to lay the heat on there for a while and see what happens. The solder is definitely... has a high melting point. Come on. Maybe I should have left my bigger tip on there to get more heat at the joint. Yeah, I'm going to have to scrape off all that goober and uh, clean these pads thoroughly. Come on. might just end up cutting that and then seeing what I can do with it later, but I'm surprised at how hard this is being. Yeah, that's definitely getting toasty. All right, so one thing that we can try doing is adding a little uh, solder that has a lower melting point. I've understood that by doing this, you can kind of lower the melting point of the other solder maybe. Okay. There we go, okay. Apparently that trick is uh, a good thing. Let's go ahead and isolate this last wire. And we'll just remember that uh, first uh, section is red, middle section is white, and the last section is black. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. Okay, so I need to get the uh, rest of the goobers out of there. See if we can scrape it. Yeah, we got a big chunk there. Let's uh, keep going. Yeah, the soldering iron tip didn't seem to affect the glue that's holding this stuff on, so we definitely need to get rid of as much as we can.
don't know that there's no battery on it. Let's try a metal tool. See if we can scrape it a little better. Be careful not to knock a pad off. That wouldn't be good. It's coming off slowly. I wonder if uh, some goo gone might be a thing we can use. Let's try some goo gone. All right, so it's not goo gone, but it's a uh, generic or some other brand it's supposed to do the similar thing of dissolving glue. So let's go ahead and get a little bit on um, our Q-tip. And let's see if it does anything to dissolve this. Eh, it actually doesn't seem like it's doing a bad job. It does seem to be breaking it up a little. Although the Q-tip's getting residue everywhere. Let's see if we can use this. That's a pretty big chunk. This might be about as good as we can get it. Let's uh, do another pass of the goo gone. And uh, see if that'll do anything. That stuff evaporates quickly. Let's put a little more on our Q-tip. Okay, we'll do a big dousing of it there. Got a lot of Q-tip hair everywhere now, but it is what it is. Okay, it's a pretty big chunk. Let's see if we can get this chunk on the far right side to come off. Quite a bit of it that's just right ready to come off, but just stuck in a corner or just by a little teeny tiny bit. So. Okay, so it's not perfect by any means, but I can see the solder, so we'll see if we can clean that up. Once we get the solder removed, maybe we'll be able to remove a little more of this glue. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's get started with that. So I just got my solder tip or my tip still on there. Let's go ahead and apply some solder to each of these pads to hopefully get it to a lower melting point. Okay, so now they're all wetted with new solder. Let's see if we can suck up any of that. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, come on. Oh. I am definitely not an expert at this. Let's see if we can get that first one off of there. Seems to be attached to both uh, pads right now. Don't want to pull too hard because I don't want to rip those pads off. They're all I've got for the battery, so. And I definitely don't want to disassemble this any further than I already have. It's a quite delicate device. Okay, off the first pad. Let's get that second pad to let go. There we go. Well, it's not too good. Let's see if we can get that third one to absorb into our solder wick. Okay, well, it's getting there. Let's uh, keep at it. Maybe we need to add a little flux. Um, to get it to stick better to the uh, solder wick. You can definitely see the pads more clearly, so that's good news. Let's uh, cut off our solder wick. That kind of damaged it. I need to get some new solder wick. I'm almost out, but... Okay, let's try this again. Give our burr, our tip a good uh, cleaning. Let's lay our wick on our first pad. Okay, then let's drag it across, see if we can get any of that to suck up. This original solder is definitely not leaded solder because it is not giving up. I've got my temperature at 300 degrees, so that should be adequate. But it doesn't appear to be. Yeah, it's definitely wetting. Got a little bit of leftover wire out of it. Okay, well, I mean, they're not perfect by any measurement of that word, but I don't want to keep applying too much heat to it, so we're going to go with what's on there and actually try to use that same solder. So what I'm going to do now is let's see how we're going to align this. Okay, so we've got our yellow wire, which should go to the center. I believe we're probably going to have to restrip these. Okay. Use the old teeth stripper. Red will go on the end, uh, the left end, and then uh, black will go on the, let's see, maybe I'll do it like this. This seems more how it wants to go. No, I want the label out, so let's go ahead and swap these around. Okay, so... Hmm, I don't know what the best way to do this is, but I know I need to tin my wires, so let's be very careful and try not to let any of these touch each other. Let's get them, go ahead and get them what, uh, tinned. There we go. Should have probably used a little flux, but... 
whatever. Okay, so they are good and tinned. Let's get these in and make sure we do not touch them together. I think I'm gonna try to do it from before I actually put it in there. Let's uh, get one of the wires. Start with black first. Let's uh, get it on the angle that we want. And let's uh, tack that in there. Okay, that's not a good connection. Let's make sure we get it completely liquid. Okay, that's a better connection. Let's go ahead and get the next one on, the yellow. There's yellow. And the next one is the red one. This one we might need tweezers for, it's being difficult. I actually think I should probably trim that one down a little bit. Okay. Just a tiny amount smaller. More than that. There we go. Okay. One thing I do like about this solder is the second I pull the heat away, it does solidify quickly. So, makes it good for this kind of thing. Okay. Just get this red one solid in there. Let me. hold of it. Get a little bit more solder on there probably, but okay. Let's go ahead and give all of these a wiggle with the tweezers and make sure they don't look like they're about to release. So okay, the black one seems solid. And mind you, I'm definitely taking a chance here. I didn't test the uh, actual wire connections, and since they were different than the uh, original, I think that it is definitely a risk. I might have, you know, completely damaged this. So make sure you know what you're doing. Don't uh, just copy this video. This is not a tutorial. It's just uh, for entertainment purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, push the battery pack back in. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing reassembled. Okay, so I guess uh, reverse order, try to put it back together. Um, I am going to try to bend this little back plate back into a better shape. So, let's see if we can do that. Without breaking it further. And I really did a number on this thing. Okay, good enough. See if we can bend that one 
back a little bit. This side looks pretty screwed because uh, you can see this seam right here. Uh, this type of metal will definitely uh, crack, so um, whatever. Okay, well, good enough. Let's uh, go ahead and reattach the, uh, whatever this is, the volume key um, and headphone jack connector, and that connects right down here, so let's see if we can uh, do that without screwing something up I think uh, I need to change the angle here all the way on there okay all right let's see if we can get this to snap back on seems like it was just kind of a pressure fit but what do I know yeah we need to bend this other side a little bit more before we push it on now let's see we'll get the top lined up okay top feels good start pressing it as we go down so it's giving me a little resistance maybe I should put this side in first might be too late now I don't want to re bend this metal yeah, okay, well, we're screwed. So let's go ahead and hopefully this isn't, yeah, something's not right here. Hmm. Okay, I see. Got a little bit of a, there we go. Nice, okay. So, I mean, it's not perfect by any means. That's like the 20th time I've sent, said that. Um, so, uh, hopefully you get the point. Don't follow my instructions on this. They are wrong. Okay, so there's that. Let's go ahead and put this little plastic piece. Well, actually, what am I talking about? We need to get the screws in, so. Let's see. Well, we're only going to have two screws now because I did break uh, this little piece earlier that went right here. So I guess we can put the screw in probably, but um, it's not going to hold the back cover on. So luckily we have a phone case for this phone. So that'll hopefully hold it together a little better than nothing. Okay, here's the first screw. Okay, and one tip with uh, this kind of thing, you don't want to thread the screws all crazy. So uh, if you just turn it backwards until you hear a little click uh, where it's resetting where the threads are, then you, then you start tightening it in there, uh, you will have a lot less chance of uh, cross-threading the original threads and we definitely don't want to do that because it'll yeah, it'll just make it hell to you know change out any of the screws in the future so you'll definitely strip one of the heads or damage something else so let's see go in okay uh, it's not in the hole. 
That's what she said. There we go. So now I'm going to back it off. There we go. Oh, it looks like we didn't even need to take out those bottom screws, so whatever, but I guess we'll put them back in. If we can, come on fingers, do your job. And that might work. There we go. I didn't even follow my own rule of backing it out first. So there we go. And let's try the fingers. There we go. Sweet. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, this looks like it was just a, I thought it sounded like there was glue on there and there might've been a little bit, but other than that, it's just a pop on type thing. So let's just pop it back on. Put the bottom edge in first, maybe. Oh, okay. Looks like it slides down onto it. Well, not completely on yet. There we go, that side's on. And yeah, there we go. Okay, battery's installed. Let's, uh, let's see if uh, it charges now. All right, here goes nothing. a fail. I'm using a battery bank. It might not be outputting enough energy. Let's try a different battery bank before we call it. Okay. All right, let's see if this one powers on. Might be one of those things where I gotta wait a while before I can, before anything shows up on the screen. All right, well, I'm gonna stop the video for for now. I'm gonna let it charge for 15 minutes or so, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so this video is a fail. Um, basically the same issues that I was having before I sw swapped out the battery are still happening and I would like to show you. So I've had the uh, phone charging for all day. Um, it hasn't displayed anything on the screen. Um, I've tried rebooting it. Um, I've tried entering it into different, you know, restore mode and, or sorry, recovery mode and DFU mode. And uh, I get nothing on the screen at all, uh, which is the same as before the battery replacement. So the only way that I can get anything to display on the phone um, is uh, using iTunes. And uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So basically I'm gonna reboot the phone, holding the power button and the home button for a few seconds. And uh, now Windows is detecting it and iPhones or iTunes is basically telling me it's in recovery mode, I must uh, restore it, which I would love to do. 
So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to pick a uh, custom firmware. Um, so I don't have to download it again since I've already downloaded the firmware file. I've actually tried it both ways. So let's hit open. And you'll see that the phone is um, capable of displaying stuff, just not uh, going through with the restore. So once the uh, wheel comes on to load, it will um, reboot. Holy shit, it's getting farther than it ever has. And, wow, okay. So actually, that <laughs> this video is uh, progress, since uh, I've never got the actual loading bar to show up. So, it is still erroring out, error 9. I will have to check and see what that is. Let's try again. All right. Restore. Select my restore file. Let's see what happens when it powers on if I get a uh, loading bar this time again. So usually it was once I see the uh, spinning wheel for loading that it would just uh, turn off. But it looks like it's actually getting a little farther this time. Well, I mean, I still consider this a fail. I'm still no closer to getting this phone running than I was before I swapped out the battery. But as you can see, um, there may be work to do. So uh, I will uh, follow up with this video if I make any headway. Um, but for now, it's a fail. Thanks for watching.